Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid Media Composer and Symphony, I got another email from a viewer who had a question. He says, Hi Kevin, I've always wanted to know how this advanced split screening works inside of Avid, as you can see with a little sample right in front of you. I started trying to recreate this and realized I needed some guidance. Any ideas? Cheers, man. Ben. Well, I thought what I would do is actually for the next few lessons, we're going to take a look at how you can not only work with a stock element like one that we're going to choose. In this case, we're going to use one from Rampant Design Tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this stock element that we're going to use was given to us by a graphic designer at the company that we work for. This is a very common situation a lot of people run into. They're given elements from graphic designers and they don't know what to do with them. Now, we're going to divide this tutorial up into a few parts. Like I said, part one, we're going to look at what to do if you've been given this element by, in this case, we're going to say hypothetically, a graphic designer. In part two, we're going to talk about building our own basic split screens. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to do right from within your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. In lesson three, we're going to do an advanced animation with split screens inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And in the last part, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a little bit of a different technique. We're going to look at what happens if someone gives you an element. It could be stock element or something that was created, like I said, in a graphics application. And how you can take that element, break it down, and actually have your elements animate on inside a Media Composer and Symphony. It's a way that most people don't think to work. But if you keep it in the back of your head, I guarantee it's going to come in to save the day every time. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete all the stuff that we had in our previous bin here. I'm just going to select everything and say see you later. We'll just rename this bin, of course, appropriately enough, Sequences. And what I need first is I need an element to work with. And like I said, we're going to start out very simple. We're just going to pretend we don't really know too much about Media Composer, Symphony. We don't know too much about effects work. And we've been given an element. And in this case, we're going to use one from Rampant Design Tools. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call up that element right here. I've identified one inside their style mats, which is this element right here. You can see it just animates on. And what we want to do is we actually want to put footage inside each one of these boxes. We're going to start out simple, like I said, in the first tutorial, and we're going to work our way forward from there. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to need to do is to get this into my timeline. But what I also want to do is I want to pick five shots that are going to go inside each one of these boxes. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to choose some motocross footage here. And I think what we're going to do is just pick shots that are about five seconds. We'll just pick a nice round number here. And we'll just drop this into our timeline. And I believe what we'll do here is... Actually, before I edit that in, I'll just open my sequences bin here. There we go. Sequences. Perfect. And let's just minimize this bin here. Now, what's also important to keep in mind, I mentioned this in one of the way earlier tutorials, is that we can also tab these elements here, just like such, or these bins, just like that, so we can switch back and forth very easily. Now, like I said, what we want to do is we just want to pick, I think it was five. Let's just double check here. Five. There we go. Perfect. So five shots. So let's come back to motocross here. And let's just pick five shots. Sure, why not these guys flying through the air here? Okay, we're just going to have this. Make sure we're actually at five seconds here. There we go. Just going to hit Y. We'll actually create all of our video tracks here, five of them. Just delete those audio tracks by selecting the audio, hitting the large uh, delete key on the Mac or backspace on Windows. We're just going to delete that. And let's just drop some more footage in here again. All of this footage here is completely random, nothing in particular. Perfect. We'll actually just use our sequence to tell us how much of that footage we need. Let's keep coming down here. Sure, why not with our dudes or, you know, they could very well be women. You know, I don't want to say, you know, that men just do the uh, motocross here. Obviously, it could be women as well. And let's just pick our last shot here. That's not too bad. And what we're going to do, oh, we don't have enough for that one, so let's pick a different one here. Maybe I'll just come up to the top here. Yeah, sure, why not have the dudes, dudes or dudettes riding away here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our five elements here. Now, you know what? Let's see if we can actually find a better one than this last one. Sure, why not have these BMXers flying across the screen? I like that one. Perfect. So we've got our five different elements that are, that are going to go inside of our split screen. So what I'm going to do is hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. 
And I'm actually going to close this motocross bin because I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to minimize sequences because I don't need that either. And we're going to take our element here that's been given to us. And we're going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. We're going to come back to the beginning of our sequence. We're going to mark an end point, and we're simply going to hit B to drop that clip in. Now, the only problem we have is that this clip isn't long enough. You'll see it's actually very short. The boxes establish themselves, and then they're pretty much gone right away. Now, the only problem that I have here is that because I'm working in a 2398 project, and this footage is 1080i, I can't just do a freeze frame. So normally what I'll do in this case is just export. So I'm going to right click, say export. And I believe I have one in here called HD Still Export. I'm just going to check the options here. We want to make sure that we're actually doing a 1280 by 720 export because that's the uh, frame size that we're working in. What we'll do is just save this out as a JPEG in this case. Let's find JPEG. There we go. I'm going to save this as 720p JPEG. Remember, that will also now save it up here into our settings, under our export settings. I'm just going to stick it on the desktop for right now. We'll just call it Advanced Split Screens. And we'll just save it onto the desktop. And of course, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to create a new bin, call this Graphics. Now, the thing is that I could have taken that little, you know, 10 frame or so section and just looped it. The only problem is that I'm going to be adding an effect onto each one of those little edits. And I don't want to get into that because it's a bit of a mess. So let's just import our advanced split screens still frame right here. I'm going to say open. And here it is right there as a still. So now all we have to do is just add an edit here. Now my shortcut for add edit, F6 on the keyboard. If you don't have add edit mapped, you can find it right here. What we're going to do is just take this and we're going to extend this down to the end of the footage. I'm just going to grab my overwrite segment mode here. Just come all the way down to the end. Very nice. And of course now I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the duration in between these two shots. And we're simply going to edit this in. Now what's going to happen, you'll see, is they're going to establish themselves and then they're going to disappear. Perfect. Okay. Now what we're going to do is let's get in and let's actually key the element out. What I'm going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette. You'll see we're actually already in the key section and I have LumaKey already selected, ready to go. You'll also notice that LumaKey is a real-time effect. What I'm going to do is take LumaKey and in this case what I'm going to do is just drop it in the middle section here. Now believe it or not, we're going to leave it just like this for now and there's a reason I'm going to do that and you're going to see why in just a second. With the Luma key effect on it, and it, the way that it is now, it's keying out the darker part of the shot, which is perfect for me getting in and positioning all the different elements exactly where I'm going to want them to go. So let's do that. I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. What we're going to do is we're going to come back up to the Blend section. I'm going to choose 3D Warp. We're going to take that. We're going to stick it on this layer here. We're going to step into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Obviously, if you don't have Effects Mode mapped on your keyboard, no problem. You can find it right here in the Composer window or right down here in the timeline. Now you'll see I'm actually zoomed in a bit, which is not too bad. What I'm going to do is just hit Control and Alt on Windows Command and Option on the Mac just to move the screen over. And let's take this element, let's shrink it down here. Let's shrink it down to, I don't know, let's say 40%. That's probably even still a little bit too much. Yeah, it's still way too big. Now what we're going to do is just shrink it down, obviously for height, not for width. So let's go down to, let's try it at 30 here. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it kind of like that because what I also need to do in this case is I need to do a little bit of cropping. Now, for this element here, I don't have to do too much only because we're at the top of the screen. So we're actually out of the way of all these other elements. So there's our first element right there. Now, all we're going to do is the exact same thing for the other elements. Now, it's going to get tricky with the ones that are right beside each other. What we're going to do here is just step out of effects mode just to sort of get our bearings here. Step back into effects mode. Perfect. Let's take this element. Let's scale it down. It's going to come down. I believe we were at 30 before. Very nice. We're going to position this where we're going to want to have it. Roughly about there. And let's just zoom in again here. We've got our magnifying glass. And we're going to step back into crop here. And all we're going to do is just crop this. Now the most important part of the crop is actually right here the divider right in the middle. Now I've actually got it perfect right there, so I think we're good to go. Now what's actually very cool is that we can actually take 3D Warp, and if I'm happy with the way that I have this element laid out, 
I can actually just take it and duplicate it by simply grabbing it and dragging it down to the next layer, like such. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I actually don't want this element to be where it is right there. It's actually going to be over here. Now, of course, because I had a keyframe right there, we're going to want to just delete that. Very nice. Now I can do the exact same thing. I'm just going to zoom back here again. So you'll see with elements that are the same size, once you have them pretty much laid out the way you want them, you can just take the 3D warp effect and just keep moving it. What we're going to do is just position this again down here like such. Now, of course, I need to zoom in because I can't see anything from way back where I am. Again, Control and Alt on the keyboard. Let's repo everything. I'm just going to, again, make sure that this right border is in between the two uh, windows of what's going to be cut out. And last but certainly not least, we actually need to delete that keyframe there. We should actually delete all these keyframes because they can be quite annoying, as you can see. It's a default, and you can't actually stop MIDI Composer Symphony from adding that keyframe, but that's okay. Okay, so last but certainly not least, we're going to take 3D Warp again, drag it onto the bottommost layer. We're going to Control and Alt, Command and Option for all of my Mac friends out there. We're going to take the element, just slide it over to here, like such, delete that keyframe. And now what we're going to do is step out of effects mode, okay? And let's come down here, and you'll see that this, you know, not looking that great. Everything's kind of all bunched up. It's because we don't have things laid out properly, but what this actually does let us do, if I step into effects mode, I'm just going to zoom back a little bit here. You'll see that everything is actually divided up very nicely, right down the middle. This one's fine on its own, divided right down the middle, divided right down the middle. This is probably going to work. What I need to do now, now that I'm in effects mode again, is I'm going to come back over to the effects editor, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the Luma key effect to invert the key. And as soon as I do, take a look at what I have now. I now have all the elements exactly where I need them to be cut out perfectly. What we're going to do now is we're simply going to take Luma key. I'm going to drag it from that middle clip. We're going to drag it to the beginning and drop it on. We're going to drag it from the end and we're going to drop it on. Now, I've got six layers going on here and I don't think this is going to play back in real time. So all I'm going to do is just render the topmost layer, not everything, just the topmost layer. I'm going to say clip, render in out. We're just going to render this. You'll see it really six seconds. That's not too bad. There we go. All I'm going to do now is come back to the beginning. I'm going to hit play. And there we go. We've just created a very basic split screen effect. Now, what's, all, what's important to keep in mind is that with this middle part, we obviously have the animation in, the animation out. We could take this middle section and animate it for as long as we want. What we can also do, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to my footage here. And why don't I just choose, we'll just choose something different like gliding. Why not? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one element here. I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to make sure that I come up to the actual clip itself. What we're actually doing by double clicking on that track is we're looking inside this effect to see the video clip that's in there. What I'm going to do is just add an edit at that point. Hit T on the keyboard. And let's put a gliding clip in there. Because what we can actually have happen is, is that midway through this shot, we can have the shot change to something else. Very cool. So you can see how you can step into these effects, get at the original piece of media, and start adding edits in, and we can still retain the effect that was applied to it. Now, obviously, because I've changed what's going on midway through this shot, you'll see that I have this red bar across everything. This is telling me that this isn't rendered, and this last shot is obviously not rendered at all. But you'll see at the beginning, because the clip is the same as that motocross clip, we don't need to re-render that. So all I'm going to do again, clip, render in, out. Say go. You'll see lightning quick. And of course, now what we have is all motocross at the beginning. And then this one here is going to cut to be gliding towards the end. So I hope you see that working with just very basic Lumikeen inside a media composer is very simple. And in this case, we were using a pre-built element, like I said, from Rampant Design Tools. In the next lesson, we're going to get into creating our own split screens. It's going to be very basic at the beginning, but what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to expand on it. What we're going to do is we're going to create some advanced matte keys for split screens. And I'm going to show you why matte keying is really going to be an awesome technique that you're going to want to use over and over again because you have a lot more control 
over your effects than you think you really do. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.